What's up YouTube? This is Dave with Mile High Campers coming back at you again with another video. Today's going to be a quick video on doing a little troubleshooting. Basically the issue today is we do not have any hot water. And as you can see I've got the gas on but we're getting a fault light up here. Now I was able to get hot water using electric so we know the electric part of the hot water heater is working. So I need to go troubleshoot uh, what's going on with the gas. All right, so obviously we're on the outside of the RV right now, and all of our gas controls are located here on the outside portion of the water heater. On the inside is where our le electrical controls are. This particular water heater is an Atwood or Dometic. Uh, Dometic actually owns Atwood, I guess, at this point. And it's a model number GC6AA-10E. So that's the hot water heater that we'll be working on today. The first step we're gonna do here in our troubleshooting is check the spark probe. We're gonna zoom in on the spark probe to see if it's even given a spark. Now it may be hard to see the ends of the spark probe there, but uh, you should be able to see a spark if it's working right. That's the first attempt and no spark as you can see. The hot water heater will do three attempts before it goes into fault mode. Second attempt, no spark at all. Third attempt, no spark. So I definitely think that is the issue here, is that we're not getting spark to ignite the hot water heater. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do real quick is just pull the fuse to see if it's still good. And hopefully you can see that, but the fuse is still good. It's a two amp fuse, and uh, per Atwood, you don't want to go larger than a three amp. So we'll go ahead and get this guy back in there. All right, so our next step here is to take a look at this brown wire here, and it goes through this thermal cutoff, which is like a uh, diode or some kind of fuse system that connects here, and then that gives us the power to our circuit board. So we want to make sure this is good. This is our first point of failure. And what this is for is if the uh, hot water heater propane tube gets too hot, it'll melt this and shut the uh, hot water heater off so you don't burn up the rest of the system. So it's actually a safety feature. All right, so the next step, we're gonna take our positive wire from our voltmeter, kind of stick it under the rubber here and make sure it's making a good connection on that brown wire. Then we're gonna take the negative from our voltmeter and go ahead and touch it to ground. Then you're going to need somebody to go ahead and flip on the gas switch and we'll see if we're getting uh, power to our voltmeter. And as you can see, we're getting power. Looks like a full 12 volts. Then it jumps up to 1242. And then it's making its second attempt. Now it's making its third attempt. So it looks like we're getting power to that brown wire. Next, we're going to go ahead and ground our voltmeter again, and we're going to take the positive on our voltmeter and stick it down here to see if we're getting power through the thermo cutoff. Second attempt. Looks like we're getting good power, same power we had on the other side of the thermo cutoff. Third attempt. Definitely smell gas. So we're getting gas back here. We're definitely getting power through the thermo cutoff but no sparks still. All right, another thing that we can do to definitely rule out that it is not the uh, thermo cutoff here is to actually remove it completely and we'll just bypass it by directly connecting it. First attempt, still no spark. And third attempt, no spark, but we're definitely getting power to that circuit board. All right, so we'll go ahead and reconnect our thermo cutoff. I'm going to disconnect the spark probe, which is this connection there. And I'm just trying to rule out, is it the spark probe or could it possibly be the circuit board? So what I'm gonna do is ground my voltmeter, and then I'm gonna take the positive end of the voltmeter and put it here to see if we're getting any kind of power going to the spark probe. First attempt and we have no sign of power coming out of this uh, connection going to the spark probe. And third attempt, so no power whatsoever. 
All right, so we've really gone through the majority of the steps here to troubleshoot this. In my opinion, it's looking like it's the circuit board to me and not the actual spark probe. Blow this area out with compressed air. I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, the only thing left we could do is pull this connector out and clean it. But as you can see, this is a fairly clean unit um, because basically it's brand new, it's under a year old. All right, I got the plug off and the plug looks really clean. All these connections here look really clean. So I definitely don't think that it's because this here is dirty. All right, we've got our plug back on. It's nice and tight. We're gonna go ahead and just for the heck of it, give it one more try to uh, ignite thinking that maybe unplugging this and plugging this back in might uh, have done something. All right guys, well that was pretty much everything I know of to troubleshoot these. Um, everything that I'm seeing here is leading me to believe that it's this circuit board here that's bad. All right guys, just got the trailer back from the dealer and guess what? It was the circuit board. So the troubleshooting we did was accurate and uh, the dealer has replaced the circuit board for me. However, don't run off because I discovered some things while I was doing some research on the circuit board. The circuit board part number varies for this Atwood hot water heater online. Like you'll find different part numbers for this hot water heater and I believe they all work. Now, they, you'll, you'll also find that the circuit board's price anywhere between $57 and $200. And so it makes it really hard because you're like, well, can I just order the $57 one? Will it work? Or do I need to go with, or do I need to spend the money and get the $200 one? Well, guess what? The one that they put on the dealer looks just like the $57 one that I bought. So I'm gonna explain that to you right now. Let's talk part numbers for this circuit board. Now, if you pull out your circuit board, or you go to the Dometic Atwood website, you're probably gonna find out that the circuit board for this hot water heater is gonna be part number 93851. Now, if, as you scour the internet, you're gonna find out that part number 91365 actually replaces part number 93851. You may also find that not only does part number 91365 replace 93851, but it also replaces part number 93305 and part number 90097. So it looks like this circuit board will work for multiple Atwood hot water heaters. Now at the time I was looking for the new circuit board online, I was in a hurry. I did not think that I could get the camper to the dealer in time for them to swap out the uh, circuit board so that we could make our camping trip. So I went ahead and ordered this part 91365 off of Amazon before I took it into the dealer. Anyway, I actually found this part 91365 on the internet priced anywhere between $57 all the way up to $200. I was able to buy this part for $57 off of Amazon. Now it looks like the vendors have raised their prices on this part on Amazon because I have not been able to find it that cheap again. However, my point to you is definitely search around. You can find this part fairly cheap. So let's take a look at the part I ordered from Amazon. As you can see right off the bat, it looks much different than the circuit board that we were looking at earlier. It's a bit wider and looks like it has more diodes. Now let's take a look at this. So as you can see, it's there's a Panasonic logo here and it's got the INSP00482 and then this diode over here, hopefully you can see that, is 1533-511836. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at what the dealer installed. As you can see, the one that the dealer installed looks identical to the one that I bought online. Same Panasonic logo, same numbers here and here. The one that I bought did work. I did use it for the few weeks that I needed it before we got a chance to take the trailer into the dealer. I just put the bad circuit board in when I took it back to the dealer. And I apologize for not getting the actual installation of this on video. My audio didn't work when I recorded it, so I apologize. To replace this thing, it's super simple. All you have to do is unplug this wire here, unplug the spark probe, and disconnect the two screws there. And then you simply put the new circuit board in, reattach the uh, wires and your spark probe, and you're good to go. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when we upload new videos. Make sure to hit that like button if this video was helpful for you. 
Well, that's it for this video, guys. I really hope it helped you guys out. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.